Good morning uh, viewers. So, in the last uh, two classes, we are talking about uh, the design of uh, slabs. So, wherein we discuss uh, the various types of uh, slabs like how you can just classify the slabs into different uh, category, methods of uh, analysis and uh, design specification as per uh, IS 456-2000 and uh, based on uh, the important uh, classification that is uh, based on bending. So, we have seen that the slabs can be classified into two category that is uh, one way slabs and uh, two way slabs. So, in one way slabs, so the slab predominantly bends in uh, one direction and the entire load is going to transfer to the two opposite uh, edges. So, we have seen the behavior of two, two way, uh, behavior of one way slabs and the design specification of one way slabs in the last uh, classes. So, today we are going to discuss uh, the one of the important uh, type of slabs wherein we come across that very often in uh, practical uh, situation. So, that is uh, the two way slabs. So, the, two, the learning uh, outcome uh, in today's class are introduction uh, to two way slabs behavior of uh, two way simply supported slabs, behavior of uh, two way restrained slabs, design requirements and uh, design of uh, two way slab. Now, coming to the behavior of uh, two way slab. So, a rectangular slab wherein if it is supported on four edges and if the ratio that is the longer span to shorter span ratio is less than or equal to two, then we call those slabs as two way slab. So, if you just look at uh, this particular uh, slab, so generally in two way slabs, so we normally designate the longer edge as L y and the shorter edge as L x irrespective of uh, the orientation, right. So, it could be in uh, the other orientation also. So, it is not that horizontal dimension is L x and uh, vertical dimension is L y. So, always in case of two way slab, so it is generally referred as longer span as L y and shorter span as L x. So, when the ratio of larger span to shorter span is less than or equal to 2, so it bends like a saucer. So, that is bending takes place in both the direction and the load is going to be transferred for all to all the four uh, support. So, the bending is something similar to a saucer. So, these are uh, the deflected uh, profile. So, if you just look at the deflected profile at center the deflection is more and as you move towards the periphery the deflection keeps on reduces. Now, coming to the behavior right again right. So, here so you can just look I have just taken uh, two strips one in uh, y direction and one in x direction. So, this is the bent shape of uh, the two strips. So, for compatibility the deflection at this point for this strip as well as for this strip has to be same. Now, if you look at the curvatures in the shorter direction and in the longer direction. So, this is the plan of this lab. So, wherein again I have just shown uh, the deflected profile uh, that is I have taken one strip here and I have taken one strip here. So, these two represents the deflected profile in the shorter direction and this represents the deflected profile in the longer uh, direction. Now, so for compatibility, so the deflection at center, so that is this deflection and this deflection has to be same. Now, if you just look at uh, the curvature of these uh, two uh, slabs, two, two uh, strips, okay. so you can clearly see that the curvature is more in the shorter direction and curvature is less in the longer direction. So, since from our uh, earlier discussion, so that is from the strength of material uh, theory, it is well established that, so we know that m by E i is equal to 1 over r. Okay. So, generally this 1 over r is called the curvature. Here it is very clear that m is directly proportional to the curvature. So, here as m increases the as curvature increases the bending moment also increases that is the reason why generally in case of two way slab. So, the bending is more in the shorter direction and less in the longer uh, direction. Now, depending on the type of uh, support. So, again this uh, two way slab can be support can be classified into two category one is uh, simply supported slab another is the restrained slab. In case of uh, two way simply supported slab, so the slab generally rest on uh, the masonry 
right so masonry walls it could be 9 inches or uh, 1 and 1 eighth uh, brick wall right so or it could be just supported on uh, the beams that is what generally you see in uh, framed construction so these simply supported slabs are common in uh, residential uh, building right so in both the cases the ratio of longer to smaller dimension is less than or equal to now, coming to the behavior of two way simply supported slabs, so wherein uh, the slabs are supported on uh, the masonry. So, since the slabs are supported on the masonry in all the four uh, edges, right. So, generally when the slabs are subjected to a downward loading, so at the corner, so there is always tendency of the slab to curl up. So, this phenomena is generally known as lifting of uh, corner in case of two way slab. So, this is generally seen in uh, two way simply supported uh, slab. So, in case of two way simply supported slab, so there is no restraint against this lifting. So, the corners are allowed to lift when the slabs are subjected to loading. So, when the corners are allowed to lift freely, so we can calculate the bending moment in the x and uh, y direction by equating the deflection at the center and we can arrive the expression m x and m y as alpha x into w into l x square and m y is equal to alpha y into w into l x square. The most important thing you need to remember is for both m x and m y you need to substitute l x where l x is always the shorter span. So, this is only for the sake of convenient we have expressed m x and m y in terms of alpha x you can express m y also in terms of uh, l y also, but as far as uh, is 456 is concerned the coefficients alpha x and alpha y are given when I mean for given for in terms of uh, L x ok and alpha x and alpha y are, are the coefficients which depends on the aspect ratio. Here in case of two way slabs what exactly happens here is so when the slab is subjected to loading here I have taken two strips one in x direction and one in uh, y direction when the entire load acts on the slab ok the load is going to be distributed to these edges as well as these two edges right. So, these are uh, the opposite edges of the slab. So, whereas in case of one way slab right. So, if this is the shorter dimension the 100 percent of load is going to be shared between these two supports. Whereas, in case of two way slab so a part of the load is going to be shared in x direction and a part of the load is going to be shared in the other direction. So, the load transfer to smaller dimension and load transfer to longer dimension basically depends on what is known as the aspect ratio right. So, we define one more important terminology that is aspect ratio it is always the ratio of L y by L x. So, the aspect ratio is the ratio of L y by L x. So, if you just look at uh, this as the aspect if the aspect ratio is uh, 1 that is uh, L y is equal to L x 50 per the entire load I mean 50 percent of the load is shared by these support and 50 percent of the load will go to the other uh, two supports. So, if the aspect ratio is 2 ok. So, that is it almost behaves like a one way slab. So, the entire load is going to be transferred between these two support. So, thus so it is very difficult for us to calculate the bending moment in x and y direction for a two way slab. So, generalized equations are not available that is the reason why code gives you the moment coefficient for the user to calculate the bending moment in x and y direction depending on the aspect ratio. So, if you just look at uh, this is the ratio of aspect ratio that is 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2 like that. So, this is the ratio of longer dimension to shorter uh, dimension. So, as the ratio increases the load transfer in x direction goes on increases ok. So, here so this is the bending moment in the longer direction and bit is this is the bending moment in the shorter uh, dimension. So, here 50 percent of the tension steel whatever you provided the mid span can be curtailed at point 1 L x or point 1 L y from the support. Now, coming to the two way restraint slab. So, that is about uh, two way uh, simply supported slab. Now, coming to the two way restraint slab when the two way slabs are supported on the beam right. So, this is what generally we see in uh, frame structures wherein uh, the slabs are supported on the 
beams. So, when the slabs are supported by the beam, so the beams have sufficient rigidity so that it does not yield. Okay. So, the corners of the slabs can be just assumed as it is they are prevented from lifting. So, at the corners the slab cannot uh, up bend up. So, that is the curling uh, of uh, the corners cannot uh, takes place that is especially at these points. Anyway, here this shows that this is a masonry, but however, we can assume that there is a beam all round uh, the slab. Okay. So, here the bending moments are generally obtained using the coefficients given in uh, table 26 depending on the type of uh, panel. So, here the coefficients are derived using uh, yield line uh, analysis in case of two way restrained slab. Now, in coming to again uh, the behavior like how exactly the two way slabs uh, behaves that is especially the restrained uh, slab. So, as I already told you, so these are these represents the deflected uh, profile right. Now, if you just look at uh, the two strips, I have taken two strips one in this direction that is one at the center, one at the end. So, here this uh, figure shows the lifting of uh, the corners which happens in case of two way simply supported slab. So, since you have uh, the beams all round. Okay. So, the beams will not allow the corners to lift up. So, this resulted in the downward reaction which is going to be generated at all the four uh, corners. So, this downward reaction will prevent the strip to rotate at the end. So, since however, this central strips tend to continue to rotate. So, at the end, so these uh, at the end you are going to get what are known as the torsional uh, moment. So, this is what I have shown here. So, if you take uh, an element here, so this element is subjected to only bending in x directions whereas, if I take an element here, so this element is subjected to only bending in y direction whereas, if I take an element here, so this element is subjected to both bending as well as the torsional uh, moment. Here, so uh, uh, at the corner, okay. So at the corners, you are going to get the cracks in this particular form. So at bottom, you get the cracks in this direction. At top, you get the cracks in this particular uh, direction, right? So in order to just prevent these cracks, so it is very essential that always the reinforcement has to run perpendicular to the cracks. So I the ideal way of laying the reinforcement at corners to prevent the torsion is to provide the reinforcement something like that. So, but anyway from the practical point of view, so generally the reinforcements are not provided in this way. So, we normally provide the reinforcement in the two orthogonal uh, directions. So, that is along x and uh, y direction. So, that is you normally provide the torsional that is you normally provide the reinforcement mesh at top as well as at uh, bottom. So, since from the fundamentals we know that the torsional stresses are generally predominant on the periphery of uh, the section, it is very essential that you need to just provide the reinforcement both at top as well as at bottom. So, generally whereas, bending is concerned, so normally you get the cracks only on the tension phase. So, that is the reason why. So, at in the central region, say for example, if you took up this particular region, so you try to just reinforce, you try to just provide the reinforcement at the bottom. So, that is these reinforcement are going to resist the tensile stresses which are going to be generated at the bottom. So, when the sections are subjected to bending, so the reinforcement is generally provided in the tension phase. So, whereas when the sections are subjected to torsion, so it is very essential that you need to just provide the reinforcement both at top as well as at the bottom. That is the torsional stresses are generally uh, more on the periphery. Now, uh, you have one uh, important uh, classification as far as the uh, two way restrained slabs are uh, concerned. Right? So, when the two way slabs are restrained that is you have uh, the beams on all round, you have you get varieties of uh, condition as you see in this uh, figure. So, when the slab right. So, when the slab is uh, continuous on all the four sides. So, that is what you see here. So, this is a general uh, plan of a uh, multi story building uh, flow right. So, you have a number of uh, panels what I have marked here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 9. So, 9 different types of panels you can uh, come across in these uh, things. So, I have just 
written even the dimensions also so that is this three so if i take this panel that is panel number seven so this is the shorter dimension so this is the longer dimension three meter by four point five meter okay now if you just look at this particular panel seven right so if you look at the boundary condition so the longer edge here is continuous whereas all the three edges are discontinuous whereas if you look at the span uh, panel uh, 6 so these two longer edges are uh, discontinuous whereas these two short edges are treated as continuous if you look at 5 so these two short edges are discontinuous whereas the longer edges are continuous so the only difference between 6 and 5 are so for 6 the two long edges are discontinuous whereas for 5 so two short edges are discontinuous whereas panel 1 so it is continuous that is the slab is continuous on all the four uh, sides so like say for example 4 so you have two adjacent edges are uh, discontinuous whereas for panel uh, 8 three edges are discontinuous and one shorter edge is continuous so whereas if you look at panel uh, 9 okay so if you look at panel 9 so all the four edges are discontinuous right so the there are basically three types of panels you in if as far as uh, individual panels are concerned say for example panel 1 so the panel is continuous on all the four sides so this panel is discontinuous on all the four uh, sides so whereas you have what we have already seen that is in case of simply supported slab so it's an independent the panel can be independent right so wherein it is resting on the masonry here all these slabs are resting on the beam generally or sometimes the panel can also be treated as restrained slab sometimes this is what generally see if you have a slab so these are the though the slab is resting on the masonry right so sometimes if you have a, a very load bearing uh, wall which is uh, placed above the slab so in plan it looks like this so in plan so even though the slab is resting on uh, the four masonry wall or that if you just build one more floor on all the four uh, sides so then also so these walls will not allow the slab to move up so generally those slabs can also be treated as the restrained uh, slab so thus the restrained slabs can be supported on beams or it could be supported on masonry so you have to be very careful as far as the behavior is concerned if you are sure that the corners are prevented from lifting or if the corners cannot move up you can just treat those slabs as uh, restrained uh, slabs so these are the coefficients which are uh, given in is 456 for various uh, uh, end uh, condition right so for various aspect ratios so the coefficients have been given so your so if you just look at the interior panel so for a particular aspect ratios that is 1.2 so this is for short span bending moment and this is for the negative uh, this is one for positive and one for uh, negative in the short direction and one for positive and one for negative in the long uh, direction so that is these are the four moments what normally you come across so if i just call this as the shortest direction so this is called the short span uh, positive moment and this is called the short span negative moment whereas this is called the short, I mean longer span positive moment and this is generally called as longer span negative moment so you get you need to just calculate the four bending moments in case of restrained slab so generally the four coefficients have been given so only when the edges are discontinuous so you don't need to just find out the negative moment at the edges so the four equations have been uh, given here now coming to the detailing uh, aspect now here so whatever the moments uh, what we calculated in the previous uh, slide okay so those bending moment uh, are applicable only in the central region so whatever i have shown here so thus the entire slab can be divided into say for example in this direction so you can divide the slab into three that is two strips so one we call it as the middle strip and these end strip these are called the end strip so the middle strip has a dimension of 0.75 times ly and the end strips are having a dimension of 0.125 l so that is one eighth on both the sides and uh, the central remaining thing that comes out to be three-fourth of uh, 
L y. So, here also you can just divide it in the same uh, fashion. So, that is uh, 3 fourth here and uh, 1 eighth at the end. So, the reinforcements are required only in this central uh, strip whereas, at the end strip. So, in this direction as well as in this direction it is just sufficient if you provide the minimum reinforcement. Now, coming again to the detailing like how exactly you can just do the detailing right. So, here so you, the, 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 this is the cross section what you see here. So, whatever the reinforcement which you have provided uh, in the shorter direction right. So, 50 percent of the reinforcement can be just uh, cut off at uh, point 0.15 L uh, in that when the slab is discontinuous on uh, the rim and uh, the 50 percent can be taken inside and here when the slabs are uh, continuous. So, 50 percent can be curtailed at uh, 0.25 L from the center right and uh, remaining 50 percent can be taken uh, inside the support. So, whereas as the steel at uh, the top is concerned. So, the 50 percent of the reinforcement can be curtailed at 0.15 L and remaining 50 percent of the reinforcement has to be taken till it is till the length is equal to point, uh, 3 times uh, L. So, wherever you have a discontinuous Z right. So, generally there will be some partial partial negative moment may arise in general 50 percent of the reinforcement whatever you have provided at center can be provided even at top to take care of uh, the small negative uh, bending moment. So, these are the three different uh, types of uh, detailing what you normally have in case of two way slabs right. So, I mean generally if the spans are almost the same. So, this is the common uh, procedure which is generally adopted. So, one bar is taken through the other bar is curtailed other bar is bent up in this particular form and the uh, balance negative moment is provided by generally a slightly uh, higher diameter bar at the top. So, this is generally the very common uh, practice of uh, providing the reinforcement in two way restraint slab. So, the reason is so if you give a bent up bar something like this you do not require the supports for the tension uh, bar. Now, this is another way by which you can just do the detailing. So, this is generally recommended when these spans L 1 and L 2 are substantially different. So, when they are different, so here the reinforcement is which is required in the shorter direction for this span and this spans are completely different. So, in that case, so you can vary the reinforcement here as well as here and this negative reinforcement is also completely independent whatever the spacing you want or whatever the spacing which is required can be provided. So, here only thing is so though it is very convenient from the practical point of view. So, only thing is you need to just see that how you can just uh, do the detailing very efficiently by changing the diameters of the bars and all. So, coming to the torsional steel. So, generally as I told you already torsion steel has to be provided in the form of uh, mesh. So, the area of reinforcement is equal to 3 fourth of uh, the area which is required at uh, the center. So, this has to be provided at the end and the length of uh, the mesh is equal to L x by 4 in both the direction. So, the size of the mesh is L x by 5 right. So, when the slabs are discontinuous on both the edges. So, whereas uh, here here as well as here. So, the uh, 3 fourth of the reinforcement is required. So, if the slab is continuous on one side and discontinuous on the other side. So, you, you require half of uh, that. Now, here uh, the entire I mean the whatever the area of steel you are going to calculate that is 3 fourth of this has to be provided in this direction as well as in this direction both at top as well as at the bottom uh, layer in x direction as well as in the y direction. Now, this is the typical uh, detailing uh, uh, picture which shows the reinforcement uh, detailing. Anyway, we will just come back to this little later once we solve one numerical example connected to this. Now, we will take one numerical uh, example. So, we will consider uh, an RC slab or a room which has a clear dimension of 6.5 meter by 5 meter. The slab is cost monolithic or the beams at the corners so that uh, the corners are prevented from lifting of the 
end. So, the width of the supporting beams are uh, 230 millimeter. The slab carries a superimposed load of 4.5 kilo Newton per meter square. So, that load whatever we have given that is 4.5 kilo Newton per meter square, it is comprises of both, uh, it is comprises of live load, floor finish and partition. So, in case if the loads are given separately, so you can always add all those uh, loads. Anyway, in this problem, the entire load has been given. So, that is 4.5 that is clearly given it is superimposed load. So, you need to add this superimposed load to dead load of the slab. So, that is the only load you need to calculate and add. So, this is the plan of uh, the slab. So, clear dimensions of 6.5 and uh, this is 5 as I already told you. So, the longer dimension is generally called as Ly and the shorter dimension is generally called as Lx. So, if you just look at the ratio of Ly by Lx, so it comes out to be less than uh, 2. So, it this slab is going to be designed as uh, two-way slab and since it is resting on the beam, so it is designed as two-way restrained uh, slab. So, and it is for an independent uh, room, it is an independent uh, hall. So, the slab is not continuous on all the four sides. So, this slab is treated as the slab which is discontinuous on all the four edges. It belongs to uh, I mean, uh, I mean, it belongs to category 9 in uh, IS uh, 456. Uh, two-way two slab restrained uh, coefficient. Now, uh, first uh, you need to just assume the trial depth. So, that is as I already gave you the empirical uh, method of finding out the approximate uh, depth. So, that is based on L by D approximately for two-way restrained slab. So, you can take L by D as L by D as 30. So, this comes out to be uh, 5000. So, always uh, the shorter span is the one which you need to take while calculating the depth required. So, shorter span that is 5000 divided by 30 gives you 160. So, this is only an approximate depth which is required. Always the depth required depends on the bending moment criteria and depends on the deflection criteria. So, however, so we will just assume the overall depth is equal to 1000, I mean 180 millimeter and let us uh, assume that uh, uh, the sub, I mean the concrete is uh, subjected to mild exposure. So, we will adopt a and since the diameter of the bar is less than 12 millimeter, you can take the clear cover as 20 minus 5 millimeter that is 15 millimeter. So, effective depth becomes 180 minus 15 that is the cover. So, if you are assuming 10 mm bar diameter, so half the diameter of the bar so that gives you effective depth is equal to 160 millimeter. So, the effective span as a we have already discussed, so it is lesser of the two that is the clear span plus the bearing or the clear span plus the effective depth whichever is lesser. So, I have just calculated uh, the span for both Ly as well as Lx. So, 6.5 into 0.23 comes out to be 6.75. So, it this comes out to when you add this to 0.16, it comes out to be 6.66. So, similarly for the shorter direction, so this comes out to be 3.5.23 uh, and 5.16. So, the effective span is lesser of these two and lesser of these two. This comes out to be 6.66 and 5.16. So, if you just calculate the aspect ratio that is alpha, so, alpha is equal to Ly by Lx. So, that is 6.6x divided by 5.16. This gives me an aspect ratio which is equal to 1.3. Now, we will calculate uh, the load on the slab. So, as I have already told uh, in the one-way slab, so we always just consider a unit uh, distance that is 1 meter on this side and 1 meter on this side. Whatever I have shown in the red uh, 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 square. So, we have taken unit uh, dimension that is 1 meter by 1 meter uh, wide uh, strip that is, so that is the self weight of that is the thickness into density. So, thickness into density into actually 1 meter by 1 meter gives you the total load that is 4.5 kilo Newton. So, since I have calculated the load for 1 meter by 1 meter, I can always represent that as kilo Newton per meter square area. So, I have just calculated the load per unit area of the strip. So, similarly superimposed load which is the given data. So, that is 4.5. So, when you add both the 
load. So, you get 9 kilo Newton per meter square. So, the ultimate load becomes 9 into you multiply that with the partial safety factor 1.5. So, it comes out to be 13.5 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, we will calculate the design bending moment and uh, we will just check the bending moment for uh, the depth. So, the bending moment in M x and M y comes uh, you are given by alpha x into w u into L x square and M y is equal to alpha y into w u into L x square. As I already told you, so generally the many students commit uh, mistakes while substituting here. So, normally they take M y while calculating M y, they substitute L y here. So, the most important thing is, so since the x coefficients have been given and M x and M y are expressed as a function of L x. So, this is only as I told you only for the sake of convenience, right. So, both M x and M y are with respect to L x only. So, alpha x and alpha y. So, when you for the given aspect ratio that is L y by L x. So, that is looking at this particular table. So, this is looking at this particular table that is when the four edges are discontinuous. So, when the aspect ratio alpha I mean the aspect ratio alpha is equal to 1.3. So, that is positive moment coefficient is 0 0.079 and uh, the long span coefficient that is alpha y is 0 0.05 say. So, sometimes your uh, aspect ratio may lie between 1.2 and 1.3. So, in that case you can always interpolate the value of alpha between these two values for the given value of uh, aspect uh, ratio. So, whenever the values lie in between, so you can do the interpolation. So, here this is what I have uh, shown. So, alpha x and alpha y, so obtained from the table. So, when you multiply that with the ultimate loading and the coefficients you get the bending moment in the shorter direction and bending moment in the longer direction. So, this is you can clearly see that bending moment in the shorter direction is substantially more when compared to the bending moment in the longer direction. So, that the reason mainly is so the curvature is more in the shorter uh, direction. Now, we will just check for uh, the depth. So, minimum depth required from bending moment consideration is m u divided by 0 0.133 f c k into b. So, this is this coefficient generally depends on the grade of steel what we are using. So, since we have taken uh, f e 500, so this is 0 0.133 if it were to be 415 it becomes 0 0.138. So, d if you calculate substituting these quantities right. So, you get uh, d comes to be equal to 103. So, this clearly tells you that so bending moment I mean the depth required from bending moment is much much less than what you are provided. However, we will provide the same depth. So, that is 160 which may require from the deflection uh, criteria. So, the, the thing which is very important is here itself do not try to modify the depth. So, check for depth and then preferably go for deflection and then modify the depth. Here itself if the depth is not sufficient definitely you need to modify, but if this check is satisfied. So, please go to the next uh, criteria. So, and then come back uh, if it is required. So, area of the reinforcement. So, area of the reinforcement required in the shorter direction is generally given by this equation that is m u is equal to 0.87 f y a s t d into 1 a minus f y a s t f c k b d. If you substitute the corresponding values and uh, if you try to just reduce this equation, this resulted in a quadratic equation in uh, a s t. So, you can always solve this equation for a s t solving as I told you, you get two values of a s t. So, take uh, value which is very relevant to you. So, if you take a relevant value, so it comes out to be 438 uh, millimeter uh, square. So, if I assume 10 millimeter 10 mm uh, diameter bar, so the spacing will be equal to, so the diameter that is 10 mm. So, that is uh, area of 10 mm uh, is 78 millimeter square. So, this is the area which is required into 1000 gives you the spacing. So, always uh, provide the spacing which is slightly lesser than uh, this and uh, see that this spacing should never be greater than 3D or 300. So, where D is the effective depth. So, if you calculate 3D it comes out to be 480 so or 300. So, this spacing should never be greater than 
300 anyway. So, uh, the spacing what you have provided is less than this and sometimes you may land up with the spacing less than 75 millimeter or 100 uh, millimeter. So, though the code does not say anything about the minimum spacing right. So, from the practical point of view, so if the spacing comes out to be less than 75 millimeter, so in order to just ink, so because that may create unnecessary problem during uh, vibration and, uh, and other things. So, the concrete does not go well uh, inside the reinforcement and all. So, that is from the practical point of view. So, the spacing generally should be in the range of uh, 75, 100 that should be more than uh, that. So, if you want to maintain that, so in case if you get a spacing which is less than that, so try uh, the diameter of the bar which is slightly higher than this. So, when the diameter of the bar is more than that, so you get a spacing which is slightly more than what is what you got. So, th for the provided steel, so the percentage of steel comes out to be 0 0.28 that is 100 AST divided by BD. So, as I told you also you can calculate uh, the area of steel using uh, the MU by BD square also this have already explained in uh, one way slab itself. So, similarly you calculate the area of steel in the longer uh, direction. So, area of steel in the longer direction can also be calculated using the same e expression. So, again which uh, resulted in uh, the quadratic equation solving you get AST is equal to 327. So, again we will use the same diameter of the bar. So, the spacing is slightly more than what is required in the shorter direction. So, this spacing shall also be checked with the same uh, thing. So, this is both the the both this uh, steel that is in the shorter dimension and longer dimension or main steel you need to check with 3D or 300. Now, coming to the check for shear and check for uh, development uh, length. So, normally check for shear is generally not required in case of slab since this check is not uh, made in uh, two way slab and uh, even the development length also is not required as we have already seen in uh, one way slab. So, since the diameter of the bar what we use is very small. So, check for development in it is also not required and most importantly if you want to really check for shear. So, do not calculate so shear I mean uh, the shear force you, you cannot easily calculate uh, the shear force. So, code does not uh, give any equation to calculate uh, the shear. In case of two way shear in case of two way slab to so shear force I mean uh, cannot be calculated directly as W L by 2. The reason is the W is not the total load what you have to take. So, unless you know the load distributed in the shorter, shorter direction and longer direction, you cannot calculate the shear in the shorter and uh, longer uh, direction. So, generally, so you can always it mention that uh, this check is uh, not very much essential as uh, uh, they are generally safe from the sh shear criteria. Now, coming to the last check that is the deflection check uh, for a slab. So, that is uh, code says that. So, as for as long as you satisfy the deflection by L by D ratio, you do not need to just uh, do the rigorous uh, deflection calculation. So, the code says that L by D actual should be less than L by D allowable. So, L by D allowable is L by D basic into K1, K2, K3, K4. K1 uh, is the coefficient depends on the tension steel, K2 depends on the compression steel, K3 depends on the T section, K4 depends on if the span exceeds 10 meter. In our case this K2, K3, K4 does not arises. So, only you have K1. So, your allowable deflection is L by D basic into K1. So, L by D basic for a continuous slab is uh, 26. So, this is what his code says. So, for continuous slab, so since the restrained slabs are treated as continuous, so L by D is taken as uh, 26. So, uh, when you multiply that L by D as 26 with K1. So, this K1 depends on the percentage of uh, tension uh, reinforcement. So, for PT is equal to 0.27, right, and the stress design stress is 0.58 times Fy, right. So, that comes out to be 240. So, from figure 4, right, so you can pick the value of K1. So, if you multiply the K1 with this, so you get 39. So, this is well, well uh, within the limit. So, K L by D actual, so that is 32, that is L divided by here again, L should be taken as the shorter uh, span. So, L by D actual is 32 whereas L by D permissible is 39. So, this is quite okay as far as the deflection uh, criteria is concerned. 
So, this is the chart where you can use uh, to calculate uh, K1. So, depending on the percentage of steel what you have provided in the shorter direction, knowing the percentage of steel, so that is 0.27. So, you that is for the corresponding value of design stress, you can pick uh, the modification factor. So, the design stress is given by 0.58 into Fy into this. So, normally if you provide the same steel whatever which is required, so this ratio comes out to be 1. So, you do not need to bother about this if this provided steel is almost same as what is required. So, if the provided steel is uh, uh, greater than what is required, so you can always modify that uh, value and uh, take the corresponding value of uh, F uh, S. Now, as far as the check for cracking is concerned, as I have already told you, so steel is uh, what we provided is already more than uh, 0 0.12 percent of the gross area and the spacing of the main steel is less than 3D and uh, 300 mm and spacing of the distribution steel is also less than uh, anyway this has I mean this has not come at all this will not come. So, because the distribution steel we have not provided. So, the diameter of the bar is uh, 10 mm so that is uh, less than uh, thickness by 8 that is 22 mm. Hence, uh, the check for cracking is uh, taken as satisfactory. Coming to the torsion steel, area of torsion steel is given by as I already told you. So, it is equal to 0 0.75 times the area of steel what you have provided at center. So, this comes out to be 328 millimeter square. So, if you provide 8 mm bars at uh, 152 centimeter center, 152 millimeter center to center. So, this comes out to be 328. So, I mean uh, 50 divided by 328 into 1000 gives you 152. So, it will just provide at 150 center to center. So, you can provide 8 mm at 150 center to center in both the direction that is in x and y direction for a length which is equal to L x by 5. So, at both and top of the slab. So, this has to be provided in the form of mesh. So, the size of the mesh is 1032 millimeter by 1032 millimeter. So, and uh, lastly, you can calculate the steel at the edge strip which contains only 0 0.18, 1.12 percent of the grass area. So, steel in the edge strip is equal to 216 millimeter square. So, if you provide 8 mm uh, bar, so the spacing can be increased to say 230 millimeter center to center. So, after having uh, designed uh, the slab, so finally, you can just look at uh, the detailing uh, sketch. So, this is the shorter dimension. So, this is the longer dimension. So, I have just marked. So, this is the size of uh, the mesh. So, the size of the mesh is L x by 5 that is 1032 I have got. So, anyway, I provided 1035 on next and y direction. So, the size of the mesh is same in at all the four uh, corners. So, that contains the uh, reinforcement which is equal to 8 mm at 150 center to center in x and y. So, both at top as well as at bottom. So, you have two layers of the reinforcement which is to be provided at top and bottom. So, that is it that is about the torsion reinforcement. So, this is the steel which is required in the shorter direction. So, that is 10 mm at 170 millimeter uh, 75 millimeter center to center. So, the alternate bars can be cut tiled at point uh, 1 L right and uh, whereas, here the steel in the longer direction comprises of 10 at 240 millimeter center to center. Again, this can be cut tiled 50 percent of the reinforcement can be cut tiled at point 1 L at from the end. Okay. So, this steel has to be provided only within this particular uh, region. So, whatever I have shown uh, in uh, blue dotted uh, line. So, this is treated as uh, the central uh, strip. So, as I have already told you, so the slab is divided into central strip and these two strips are called end strip that is this and this. So, as far as the steel in this direction and this direction is concerned. So, it is just sufficient if you provide the minimum uh, steel. So, that minimum steel comes out to be 8 mm at 230 millimeter center to center. So, thus the minimum steel is provided at the end uh, strip. So, this is how you can just provide the detailing as far as the two way restrained slabs are uh, concerned. So, if you have a two way restrained slabs with end conditions different say for example, if there is one more slab which is adjacent to this you do get the negative uh, steel at the end also. So, that negative steel has to be extended for a length which is equal to 0.3 L. So, here only steel has been calculated uh, in the shorter dimension 
expansion and in the longer direction that is only positive steel has been calculated. So, if at all if you get the negative steel also that is you may get a negative steel here as well as you may get a negative steel at the longer edges. So, the negative steel has to be provided. So, at top right. So, for a distance which is equal to 0 0.3 L from this end and 0 0.3 L from uh, this end in both x and y direction depending on uh, which side of the slab is uh, continuous. So, this is how you can do the detailing for a two way restrained uh, slab. So, the same detailing procedure can be adopted for any type of two way restrained slab, but the only thing is if the slab is uh, continuous on this side. So, whatever the reinforcement here the slab is discontinuous on both the side. So, if the slab is continuous on this side. So, whatever the tension steel you have whatever the torsion steel you have provided here half of this has to be provided at this corner as well as at this particular uh, corner. So, half the steel has to be provided. So, obviously, the spacing will definitely increase when compared to this which has been provided there. So, thus, so uh, we have learnt in the present uh, class. So, how the two way slabs behave and how exactly you can uh, classify the two ways into different uh, category right. So, depending on the end condition. So, we can classify the two way slabs as uh, two way simply supported slabs and two way restrained uh, slabs right. And again two way restrained slabs you have various category. So, depending on the end conditions right. So, you can classify the slabs into nine different uh, category. So, accordingly you, you need to calculate uh, the bending moment using the coefficient. So, as I already told you, so in two way slabs, so it is not possible to directly obtain the bending moment. So, you need to refer the code for uh, calculating the bending moment as the behavior of slab is quite uh, complex. It is not possible to determine the bending moment directly as the bending moment directly depends on the aspect ratio of the slab and the boundary condition. So, thank you very much uh, for the patience here.